All right, what is going on, my dude? Today, we're talking about the newest champion entering MCOC, Adam Warlock. Now, I actually thought this video was supposed to go up on Thursday. Sorry, so we're a little late, but that's okay. We're gonna jump into it today a little bit late. Everyone was opening their six star crystals. No one had time to look at Adam Warlock yet, right? Right, so. Adam Warlock, this is not mine. I do not have a six star rank five unduped Adam Warlock. This is just in the unowned section here, okay? So this guy, man, he is, he's a champion. He's a champion is what he is. He has a lot of abilities and we'll break it all down today and I'll tell you exactly how he works. There's a lot of text. Okay, we probably won't go over every single thing. I'll tell you the important stuff like always, and it's all gonna make much more sense when you see it in action. Okay, so let's jump into it. So he's one of those champions who has some passive power over time. He gains 2.5% of a bar of power every second, but his combat power rate is reduced by 25%. You never notice the combat power rate reduction, but you definitely notice the passive power. So overall, it feels like a net positive. Um, when his power is stolen, he stops getting power over time. So that's one way to counter him, like with Dr. Doom Special 1, Magic Special 2, for example. When his uh, power is drained or burned, like from a tech champion, he gains a non-stacking 50% energized passive for 12 seconds. Um, so now you're going to be gaining more combat power rate than normal, and you still have the passive power over time. Now, you can't control his passive power gain, like with Spidey 2099 or Quicksilver or with a Petrify from a non-Mystic Champion, okay? Now, he has something called the Sovereignty Counter. If you don't know, that's his race, the Sovereign. Now, uh, basically, this is like his whole kit right here. This is what it all revolves around. If you do a special attack or a second light attack into the opponent's block, you're going to start the Sovereignty Counter, okay? Now, this also happens when you use a special attack, uh, but, but you want to do it the way I just said, because when you do that, your combo counter increases by 10 instead of 1 on that hit. Now, as the counter goes up, you gain more buffs. Right away, you gain an unblockable buff. If you're playing this man properly, you're always unblockable, all right? At 10 hits, if you're playing him properly, you always have true damage. Okay? You gain true damage at 10 hits, at 20 hits, precision, which is a very powerful precision. 20,250. That's like having like nine Hercules special one precisions. More. Kind of. I don't know. I don't remember. His is like 2,000 something. But that's a lot. You basically have almost guaranteed crits. At 30 hits, you gain a ridiculous fury of 10,000. Okay, and that lasts from 30 to 40. And then at when you reach 40, your counter is over and then you gain a stackable fury buff. Okay, that increases your overall attack rating by about 7,000 for 60 seconds. Okay, this maxes out at two stacks. Now, what happens here when you have these buffs is that they're kind of like on a counter. Okay, this counter lasts for two seconds and it's refreshed anytime you hit the opponent or any time you use your special attack or the opponent uses their special attack, it's refreshed and paused during special attacks, okay? Now, if this counter falls to zero, right? If the little counter falls away, the sovereignty counter goes bye-bye. This also happens if you parry the opponent, okay? Now, when this happens, you get a sovereignty buff. Now, the sovereignty buff cannot have its ability accuracy reduced or be nullified, staggered, or fate sealed by champions, not nodes. So not buffet, not power snack, just by champions. Um, new personal buffs, they become sovereign, so they get around those abilities as well. He also gains immunity to all nullify, stagger, and fate seal effects caused by champions, and stun debuffs inflicted by the opponent's power remastery suffer minus 100% ability accuracy, so you can dash in, not worry about being parried, and you're unblockable anyway, okay? so. Another thing that happens when the sovereignty counter becomes a thing is that he places a taunt on the opponent. This is going to make them a lot more aggressive with throwing their special attacks, which of course you really, really want, while also reducing their attack rating so you can kind of block their specials, keep the counter going, and go in and punish. Now, when the sovereignty counter is over, it goes on cooldown for I believe 8 seconds, 10 seconds, or something like that. Um, and when that's over, the opponent is inflicted with an intimidate buff. So this allows you to go in, 
hit their block and start the counter again. This is all gonna make a lot more sense when you're actually seeing it in action. Now, he has a stasis pod, which is kind of darn powerful, man. The stasis pod is a ridiculous mechanic that's just absolutely absurd. So the stasis pod, first and foremost, right? It says once per fight here, but in reality, the stasis pod is activated after every special two, okay? And every now and then, the opponent doesn't use their special attack when you enter your stasis pod, but for some reason, it feels like the taunt on the opponent is multiplied by 800 billion when you're in the stasis pod. So it feels like you go special to knock them down, enter the pod, and they almost always just use their special attack right into the pod. And what happens? All incoming damage is reduced by 75% and you instantly regenerate 74% of all incoming damage, unless you're suffering from soul bob, barb, okay? Now, when you're in the pod, you're locked into place, you can't use attacks, can't be interrupted, you lower the ability accuracy of damaging debuffs and heal block effects by 100%. And when you enter the pod by double tapping block, you gain an energy protection buff, granting immunity to shock, incinerate, cold snap, and frostbite for 60 seconds. And when you emerge from the pod, you go invulnerable for 0.25 seconds, okay? All of this doesn't work against special three, by the way, okay? So, like I said, this happens when you double tap lock when fighting, and it happens on defense, okay, if he falls below 25% of his max health once per fight. But like I said, the special two, it's going to happen every special two. You enter the stasis pod for two seconds, and it can happen multiple times. The special one, if you have a personal precision buff, the last hit does a stun. And the special three, you gain another non-stacking fury buff. So you can have up to four fury buffs total on this guy in like a long, long fight. And the damage gets absolutely absurd at that point, because you can get two from doing two sovereignty counters, one from the special three, and then one between 30 to 40 in your combo. So that is Adam Warlock. That is how he works. That is his abilities, all that fun stuff. The guy is, is kind of a little strong, okay? He's not Hercules. I don't expect anybody released ever again to be Hercules, but he's up there. He's not, he's not Hercules though, but he's really good. All right, let's move into it and, and do some, some rotation stuff today, okay? Now, what's so fun about the rotation is that Depending on where you're using him, you can kind of do whatever you want. So let's say you want to use him in Battlegrounds, right? Here's a Star-Lord with 190,000 health, okay? Now, this is a rank 4 Adam Warlock, okay? And what I like to do is, for like Battlegrounds type stuff, I like to go in, start my Sovereignty counter, and start hitting them, right? If they block, cool. Go in, hit their block. We got the precision. Go in. Look at that. Stunned, right? Gonna bait the special two here. Cool. Gonna go in here. Gonna activate my pod so I can do this. Heavy attack. Big heavy. Special one through their block. We're doing the big yellow numbers. We're going in again. I mean, like, the damage is really darn good, right? So that was in total about 200,000 damage in about 40 seconds, right? And that's like no special rotation you kind of go in you hit their block and you hit them more than they hit you okay for all time's sake let's go for our deadpool buddy right our deadpool buddy in 6.4.1 now i'm gonna do the same kind of thing here i'm gonna build up a little bit more power though and i'm going to go like this i'm going to build up a little bit more and i'm gonna start my counter i'm gonna bait his special one we're gonna go in here and we're gonna kind of keep it going we're gonna build to just under two bars of power and we're gonna go for this we're gonna stun him we're gonna go in we're gonna bait out a special two right we're gonna go in here and we're gonna activate our pod so we can stun him go for a heavy attack Go for another one, we whiffed, but it's okay, because we'll throw an unblockable special too, right? And from there, we'd be in the pod. One thing I forgot to show you guys real quick that I just remembered, his sick ability is quite good, all right? When entering the stasis pod, you gain a regen buff, healing up to 10% of your missing health, which is a lot. And you do that after every special too. Also, when the opponent strikes into the pod, they have up to a 100% chance to be inflicted with the stun debuff for two seconds. So that's really great for I like to do the pod, that way they can get stunned and I can do a big heavy attack, right? That's a lot of fun. Now this is a bigger Star Lord, 600,000 health. This is my favorite rotation for this guy for like non-battlegrounds type fights. I like to go like this, I like to start, 
my counter, build up to 15 like this, and then build up to 20, okay? I like to bait out a special attack, and now I like to get rid of it. Boom, I have my sovereignty buff now, okay? I'm gonna build up a little bit more power, push him to special one. Now he's at like no power, right? I'm at two bars. Fantastic, this is where I want to be, okay? Hit and turn with the Intimidate, go for the special two, and now we're gonna use that sig ability to do this. Stunt, right? Boom, perfect. We have time to go in. We have our precision buff, right? We could bait out a special attack. We could build up a little bit more power, go in here, go for special one right under special two. Now, when it comes to the stun chaining stuff, if you attach a relic onto Adam Warlock, it's going to be so much easier. You can literally do special one, combo, special one, combo, relic, combo, special one. But as you can see here, we have a nice fury buff now. And what we're gonna do is use that intimidate to start up our counter once more, right? He's throwing the special one. We're throwing our special two here, and we're gonna push him a little bit high on the power, but that's okay. We're gonna go for our heavy attack, 22K. We didn't crit on that one, but look at this. Oh, we did our little double tap. Gonna go for another special two. We're gonna just keep throwing the special two. We're gonna get the regen. We're gonna get everything that we need here. Look at that. The special one is as 40K, 40K. It's almost like it doesn't exist. We got hit there. We got hit there. I feel like I just like, I, 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 I don't know if I thought I killed him. I just kind of like stopped playing. I don't really know what happened there. But regardless, right? Yeah. So once you get into like your little rotation there, he becomes so consistent with the taunt on the opponent. And like I said earlier, it feels like that taunt is multiplied by a billion when you throw that special two and you're in the pod. Maybe it's because you knock them down and they're in the corner because you push them back so far that they get up and throw the special right away. I find that often knocking them down in the corner gets them to throw their specials as soon as they throw up, um, throw up, stand up. So that really might be it. I have no clue. Um, but yeah, that's something that I noticed with him quite a bit, right? But as you can see, man, the taunt, the intimidate, he has a lot of control over the opponent. And that's intended because as you can see right here, it's literally called Master of Souls. That's of course in reference to like in the comics, he was, you know, had the soul stone and everything. Um, but yeah, taunty buff and intimidate. He just is, is, is messing with the opponent's soul, man. He's just making them do what he wants them to do. So, right? To be a cosmic champion, you do have to counter tech champions' abilities, and there are some pretty powerful tech champions, right? And of course, the first one that comes to mind is Penny Parker. It feels like nowadays every champion is a Penny Parker counter, but Adam is, is quite a good one. He's completely unblockable the entire time. You'll never get auto-blocked by her. And if you do, the power burn will increase your combat power rate, right? We have Shuri as well. Shuri is a very, very annoying defender because when she gets to 10 kinetic matrix, she does a heavy attack, she goes untouchable. Well, the way you counter Shuri is you attack with true damage. Not many champions have true damage attacks. Right? So Shuri is never going to be getting her little kinetic transference charges. Also, we can do this kind of thing, right? And just kind of ignore all her special attacks and all that fun stuff, right? It's a very solid countering Shuri. We also have Viv Vision. Viv Vision is going to actually power burn us. And look at this, right? We're getting the energized. So we're actually gaining the power here. We messed up bad. Going for the, 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 the pod through the special one. Oh my God, I didn't dex it properly, but it's okay. It's okay because we're unblockable and we could just do that. And we can just do that, right? And we came back from it like it was absolutely freaking nothing, right? So. He counters tech champions annoying abilities very well. Also, Ice Man, Cold Snap, gone. Ice Armor, gone. Right? It's just gone. It's just gone. And then you can fight him like normal, all that fun stuff, right? Yeah, we kept the whole fight in here. Now, another thing is that with the sovereignty buff, his buffs aren't subject to ability accuracy reduction. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you do what I'm about to do, but he could do it. And maybe it is a solid thing because you have true damage and you have almost guaranteed crits and you have big fury. But we're fighting Rintra 
and we're just kind of ignoring his neutralize here, you know? Now, after a while, we are going to get those ruptures on us, but that's like kind of okay, especially in this duel here. It's totally fine. So watch this. He's going to throw the special two. We're going to go double pod right through it. We're going double pod. We double potted him right there. We're going to go for the special one now with the Fury, right? Knock him back. And every time you knock him down, actually, we are going to be reducing his mystical charges. So maybe if you go more for like the special one spamming kind of thing, it could be like kind of decent. Now, another thing is that when you are in the pot, and I don't have um, a clip of this available to show you, but um, let, me, let me find it in here. Oh, here. All incoming damage is reduced by 75%. That works against, for example, Galen's Harvest. So if you're fighting Galen, first of all, you're spamming specials with this guy left and right like it's nobody's business. Galen really shouldn't enter Harvest when you're fighting him, but if he does, you just double tap and you kind of ignore the damage, right? Or you go for the special two. I guess, nah, I don't know if you can go for the special. Or, yeah, you go for the special two at the perfect time where you can't use a special attack. That could work. Eh. But, you know, point is, that kind of stuff, he gets around really, really well. Another thing, cool little Easter egg right here, is that against Silver Surfer, when he uses a special two, please use it right now. Please use the special two. Please just use the special... Damn it. Watch. See those zeros? It's a little callback to the comics there. So he takes no damage from Silver Surfer's surfboard. However, it can't hat nice. However, he does take the extra burst damage though. And why not? So this guy's about to use his harvest, right? He's in his special one right now. All right, we're gonna go like this. Watch this, double tap. Watch our health. Yeah, see that? Nice, not too bad. And we can go like this and then use the special two and all that fun stuff. And then, yeah, he just, I'm telling you, man, they just, they throw the special like right after. Almost every single time. Watch, let's see if we can get him to do it again. Watch. Oh no. Yeah, watch. Let's see if he throws the special two, like, or this whatever special right away. He's dead. Doesn't matter. But yeah, guys, that's Adam. Again, he's not Hercules. And you know what? It may not look it. He does have a bit of a skill cap where he's not going to be for everybody. He's not going to be for everybody because he's a little stressful to play until you get used to him because you don't want to parry with him. You want to just rely on the unblockable and you want to really manipulate the opponent's power bar while keeping a strong feel on yours, which is something that a lot of people don't tend to enjoy. But if that is your type of play style, I think you're going to like this guy a lot. Personally, I'm a fan. Um, he's very powerful if you play him properly. I don't think there's any denying that whatsoever. Um, just the, the, the numbers are yellow and quite big. The control is is there, you know? Two important things. Two important things that a, a, that a champion can have. The sustainability is there for sure, you know? He's annoying on defense as well, especially if you don't have a solid enough counter to him. There are some really good counters, of course, but, you know, I think he's going to be a solid two-way champ. Now, one thing uh, to note for sure, though, is that, you know, after the, the six months, there is the, the rebalancing valuation and everything. Adam's strong. Adam's strong. I, 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 I don't usually, like, you know, be a, I'm not usually the type of guy who's like, who knows, might want to might want to wait and see. Adam's strong, dude. Like, he's a strong champion. So, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But I don't know. Will he get tuned down? Possibly. If he gets tuned down... I doubt it will affect his overall rotation and effectiveness. But that's Adam Warlock. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know what you think all about this guy and his 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 play style, his rotation, his effectiveness. I want to know what you guys think. Now, see, I've seen a lot of people say he's better than Hercules. He's not. But let me know where you think he ranks in the Cosmic class. I'd pretty comfortably put him like in the top five. But let me know what you think. That's it for this one. I'll be seeing you around.